Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter from Top Bowl. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. Yeah. All right. We got a bag full of wires and what looks like an off on switch and also uh, some fuses and a user's manual. And then there's also the inverter. Okay, and now here is everything opened up. What we have is the inverter. We do have a, uh, a push button on off switch and it looks like it has a lot of cable. I'm guessing it probably at least 15 to 20 feet of cable. It also came with uh, your battery cables, which are actually two eight gauge cables. And we're gonna be using these cables in our testing just to make sure that they don't get too hot. And then it also comes with eight uh, 30 amp fuses which I'm guessing there are replaceable fuses on the inside, so we'll, we will be opening this up to look at the internals. Okay, the measurements for this inverter, it is three and three quarters inches tall. It is uh, 12 inches wide, but with the uh, terminal connections, you're looking at like around 13 and a quarter inches. And then it's about eight and three quarters inches deep. And the unit weighs seven pounds. Okay, and looking at this unit, you can see that the top just says top bowl 2000 watt pure sine wave 12 volt DC to 110 volt AC. On the front, you have two AC receptacles, a USB A and a USB C port. You have a small display right here. Uh, this is your screw in connection for your on off switch, and here is your power switch. On the back side is your, uh, your battery input connections, and you have two fans. It also comes with these screw down plates right here so you can actually permanently mount it so it won't move. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hook it up to a battery and see what it does. All right, I was just hooking up this battery and the one thing that, I, that concerns me is the connections for the positive and negative are, I feel like they're really close together and there's no separation in between. So it's very possible to accidentally touch uh, your negative side onto your positive or vice versa. Um, I feel like they should at least switch one of these over so the, uh, the connection is pointing down or there should be uh, some sort of plastic plate that goes in between them so that way you don't accidentally touch them. But for now, since this is how they have it, I would definitely recommend connecting these connections first and then connect them to your battery. All right, this inverter is all wired up, so let's go ahead and turn it on. And the fan seems like it stays on for quite a while on first startup. There we go. Okay. Okay. On the display, it shows a pure sine wave little symbol right there. Um, it says 11 degrees Celsius, which I don't feel is correct. Um, also, it says zero, zero watts, which means that there's nothing coming out of the AC side. Um, it shows that there is 111 volts uh, on the AC side. There is 13.1 volts on the DC side. And it also has a battery gauge right here, which I'm guessing is uh, it's measured by the voltage of the battery. So this won't really do much if you have lithium iron phosphate batteries. Okay, testing with oscilloscope. There is a very nice uh, pure sine wave right there. All right, and checking with my multimeter, I'm actually showing uh, 113.6 volts coming out of the AC receptacles. Okay, and uh, the standby efficiency looks like it's pulling 0.82 or 0.83 amps. So we're looking about uh, about 10 watts of uh, energy being pulled just by this thing being on standby. All right, what we're gonna do next is we're just gonna turn on a 500 watt heater just to see what it acts like and also if the display is accurate to what the kilowatt says. The kilowatt says 465, the display says 465. So display wattage and kilowatt wattage are almost identical. That's great. So that makes me confident that we can go ahead and use this wattage display to make our measurements. 
So now what we're going to do is do a single port test. We're going to use one port and we are going to be powering a 500 watt heater and a heat gun. A heat gun on medium, which should give another five or 600 watts. And it looks like uh, when it reaches a thousand watts of output, the fans automatically kick on. And right now it is, uh, it is producing 1,011 watts. Let's go ahead and kick this up all the way. We're now doing almost 1,500 watts. And in the display, it does show a little fan spinning. It's good to see that it can do 1,500 watts out of one receptacle. It's not split between the two. It's not 1,000 and 1,000. It's actually probably a true 2,000 uh, on either port or all together. All right, the next thing that we're gonna try is we got our 500 watt heater going. So it's pulling 464 watts. And we have this uh, griddler right here. We're gonna go ahead and kick this up all the way. And that's gonna boost it again to 1530 watts. And then let's go ahead and put this heat gun on medium and that should get us right around 2,000 watts. Oh, it's starting to beep. The display only shows 1,690. It also shows that the voltage of the unit's down to 101. Let's go ahead and kick this up all the way, see what happens, ready? All right, all three of these, okay, and it just shut off. Okay, we're gonna try this test again because I don't, I don't feel like the accuracy on that uh, the display, I, once it got way up, I don't know if the voltage went way down and it just wouldn't get up to 2000 watts. So I'm gonna measure it again with these two meters right here. So let's go ahead and first turn on the, the heater. And that's on this side over here. And also with the uh, heat gun, we're getting around 1000 watts coming out of this side right here. And now this side, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this griddle. Yeah, and the whole thing kind of has like zaps down. All of a sudden, this is down to 780, and this is 918. So that's only 1700 watts. So it's not letting us get up to 2000 watts. And the voltage is way down. It's down to 103.6 volts. So the voltage really drops. And that's why it's not letting us get to that 2000 watts. And then once we try to go higher than that, turn this up all the way. Yeah, see this is still at 1000 watts, even though I turned it up all the way. The voltage is just way too low. Okay, well, I think I'm done with my testing. I was not impressed with that last test. It's saying that it's a 2000 watt inverter and not being able to get past 1700 watts of max output. Uh, that doesn't really sit well with me at all. Uh, if you're going to say 2000 watts, you should be able to push 2000 watts. This really should say a 1500 watt inverter and having that overhead would be a much bigger selling point. I was going to open it up to see the internals and everything, but if it can't even reach 2000 watts, I'm not even going to bother. If you do want to see the internals on this, uh, please let me know in the comments and I will do a separate video of the internals. But with this inverter, there's actually just a, a few too many things that I'm just not happy with. Mostly the inability to be able to push out 2000 watts. What it does is it drops the voltage so bad that the unit shuts off. It gets down to like 87 volts and it still, and it still can't push out enough amperage to, you know, to get to that 2000 Watts. <clears throat> Even though I'm using a, a 200 amp battery with a 200 amp BMS in it, uh, which can easily push out the amperage that it needs for a 2000 Watt inverter. Also the, uh, <clears throat> I'm glad that it has these, these caps on here. Uh, but I don't like the connections. I don't how I don't like how they're so close together and that you just have to make sure that you connect the inverter first 
and then the battery. I'm, I understand that that's probably the way you should do it, but the way you should do it and the way that people sometimes do it can be vastly different. And to me, that's just kind of dangerous because if you have your battery hooked up and you connect your positive and you connect your negative, if it shifts at all while you're connecting it for any reason and they touch, boom, dead short right there. <clears throat> also, if you're trying to tighten, you know, if you've already got one connected and you're trying to tighten it down and you don't have insulated tools, they could easily touch. And that, again, is a dead short, big no-no, big shock. The only thing I do like about this <clears throat> is that it has a lot of safety features involved. It has over voltage, under voltage, over current. Uh, it also has over temperature. Even though it said that it was 11 degrees Celsius on the screen, and I know that it's not 11 degrees Celsius in this basement. Alexa, what is 11 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 11 degrees Celsius is 51.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And this basement right now is right around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I do like that it has the aluminum casing, but it also has these plastic ends, which um, I also don't like. I feel like the whole case should be made out of aluminum. And I also like the idea that it does have a, uh, a, a power push button with a 20 foot cord. So that way you can turn it on and off remotely. But overall, I can't say that I can recommend this. Uh, it not being able to get up to 2000 watts when it clearly says that it is a 2000 watt inverter uh, really doesn't sit well with me. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions about the top full 2000 watt inverter, uh, please leave them in the comments. Um, I will have a link in this to uh, their website so you can look more into it if you like. Thank you so much again and have a great night. Bye-bye.